creamy and delicious and flavorful potato soup. It's not loaded down with milk. It is quick. You can make it in the time it takes you just to boil potatoes on the stove. We have soup done in our Instant Pot. That is coming up right now on The Last Minute Cook. Hi, I'm Debra. You're watching The Last Minute Cook where I share delicious recipes that are quick so that you can make dinner at the last minute and feel good about what you're serving. So if you are new here, consider subscribing and ring the little bell so you'll be notified of my new episodes. And if you'd like to reach out, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up on the video and reach out. Let's connect. Okay, so for today, we are making a delicious potato soup right in the Instant Pot. And what I love about this soup is that the time it would normally take me just to get the potatoes ready to make the soup is the same time I've got the whole thing done by using the pressure cooker. So this makes making this soup something we can do at the last minute. And this recipe is flavorful, it's so good. So what I'm going to be using today, we are going to be using four large russet potatoes and we're going to be using a yellow onion. You could use a white onion, but we're just gonna use half. We're going to also throw in some bacon because bacon and potatoes, y'all, oh, they just go together. I'm only using two slices. We'll talk about um, substitutions for that. And a little bit of butter. And we are going to be using chicken stock. And of course, some other wonderful things like cheese and chives, a little bit of garlic, but that's it. Very few ingredients will give us a very flavorful soup. So let's get started. We are going to start by sauteing our bacon with our butter and our onions. Now, if you're using pre-cooked bacon, you can double the amount of bacon. I'm using two slices because it's not pre-cooked and it's gonna give us a lot of grease. So we're gonna keep it down to two. Um, but it gives you just the right amount to get a beautiful flavor within the whole vat of soup that we're about to make. So put our saute feature onto high and hit start. We're going to get in first our butter and our bacon. Now I uh, just go ahead and cut it right on in. I have to double this up and cut it and just kind of like that. Kind of small little bite size pieces. These are gonna cook down quite a bit while um, it's, it's sauteing. So again, if you're using like a pre-cooked bacon, you could double this because you're not gonna have as much of the grease. Um, but two slices of uncooked bacon just yields the perfect amount of flavor in this soup. These pieces that are kind of stuck together as they heat and as they cook, they're gonna separate, so that's easy. Okay, so let's get that going. And um, we're gonna cook that bacon with four tablespoons of butter. Mine's a salted butter. Use whatever you've got, four tablespoons. This is good potato loaded soup, y'all. Okay, get that in there. And once we have our bacon kind of going, we're gonna go ahead and add our half of the onion, half, this is half of a yellow onion, right on in. That was maybe about 30, 45 seconds. I just wanted to get the bacon going because I'm using uncooked bacon. Now, have, if you start with pre-cooked bacon, you'll just throw your bacon and onions in there together because really you just want to flavor that onion and that butter with the bacon and it's already cooked. So you'll go ahead and draw out the oils um, very quickly. So get all that just thrown in if you're using pre-cooked bacon. And if you're using pre-cooked bacon, the store-bought kind, I would probably double it and do four, cut up four slices. If you see um, any, any bits of brown starting to form or stick to the bottom of the pot, that's okay. I'm gonna just continue to stir it. We're gonna deglaze that in just a minute. Now we're gonna throw in two teaspoons of minced garlic. The next step is to do a deglaze of our pot. I'm gonna add just a touch, a splash of my chicken stock. So this recipe calls for um, four cups of chicken stock. You can use broth, but stock's more flavorful, so I like the stock. So I'm gonna put just a splash in here while the pot is hot. 
just a splash. There it goes, you can hear that. And then I'm gonna use my spoon to scrape up the bits that have been kind of stuck to the bottom of the pot so that we don't get that burn signal. And it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be somewhat smooth down there. There we go, it comes up very easily if you do it while the pot is hot. We are going to go ahead and put in the rest of our chicken stock. So again, this is four cups right in. I'm using four large russet potatoes. I've gone ahead and peeled mine to save some time for you guys, but I'm gonna show you that I just, um, I have this little handy dandy peeler. I use this both for my carrots and for my potatoes, and the little thing has lasted me for so many years. Like that. And you can leave some skin on if you like to have skin in your soup. Um, my family prefers it without, so I try to get them as, as peeled, cleanly peeled as possible. I'm just gonna fork poke a few little holes right into my potatoes. Maybe don't do your potatoes too far in advance because they do brown pretty quickly and pretty easily, unless you're gonna maybe store them in water. And then we're just gonna put the potatoes right in there with our bacon and our butter and our garlic and our chicken stock right there. There's four. Now I am using an eight quart. If you're using a six quart to get this to fit, you might can chop them in half or you could go down to three potatoes. So just kind of make that work for your instant pot or your pressure cooker. I also like to just take a little uh, bit of the stock and just pour it right over or scoop it just to get a little bit of that flavor onto all those potatoes before we pressure cook just because. It maybe doesn't make that much of a difference, but I, I feel like it does to give the potatoes a chance to get all flavored. Okay, that's it. We are now going to pressure cook this for 20 minutes on high pressure. That is because I'm using these large style russet potatoes. If you're using a smaller potato, potato you'll need to cut your time a little bit. Um, so go up to your manual pressure cook setting and make sure you're on 20 minutes and you're on high. And I'm gonna hit start. Make sure you're on sealing, not venting, so that we'll be able to come to pressure. We will check this after we do a 10 minute natural release. So we're gonna have some preheating time, 20 minutes of high pressure. I'm gonna give about a 10 minute natural release. Then we'll do step two and dinner's almost on the table. Okay, I've gone ahead and released the pressure after we waited 10 minutes. Um, so it cooked for 20, waited an extra 10 on that countdown and then released that pressure. You could of course you know, do a natural release, but I like to release it at 10 because um, I like to have the little bits of potato in the potato soup. So the next step, once we're done with the pressurizing, mm, okay, is to use a potato masher. Something like this, if you've got this on hand, or I guess if you don't have this, you would just use, um, I don't know, some you know, forks or something to mash this, but you, you're gonna need to mash your potatoes. So this is a very inexpensive tool, and I'll link below where you could get this one if you don't have one. This is going to thicken as it cools. Oh, and by the way, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, click that little thumbs up button and also consider subscribing if you haven't done that for more episodes like this. Um, so we're gonna mash this up and as this cools, this is going to thicken. So you're going to uh, want to make sure that when you're serving it, it's nice and warm and you may need to add a little bit more um, broth when you're warming it up. At, when you have it for leftovers, you're going to want to warm it up with some additional liquid because it's going to thicken. It's basically like one big roux, which is why I'm not making a roux or adding anything like that because that's really what potatoes kind of become. So you'll need to thin it out when you're gonna have it for leftovers. So now I've used my masher at this point. This is about the consistency uh, for the potatoes that I like. And as we add our next couple of ingredients, you're gonna see it even continues to to blend even more beautifully. So I'm adding a cup of sour cream at this point. You would not want to add this before you pressurize. This is the step that you do after. And we're going to also add a cup of sharp cheddar cheese. And we will 
uh, reserve some cheese, have some on the side grated to garnish. So I'll show you that in a minute as well. So we're going to mix this up while it's nice and hot. That cheese is going to melt into this soup and give it just that touch of cream that you want without it being overloaded with too much lactose. Look at, look how smooth this is becoming from the addition of that cream and, and cheddar. And you can see those bits of bacon in there. Okay, and at this point, if you like a lot of salt or like a lot of pepper, this is where you would add that. If you don't have this on hand, you definitely can skip this part, but it is nice to have a little bit of a green onion. It adds a beautiful bit of color. Okay, do you see the texture of this soup? It's creamy, but you're gonna get those nice, hearty, a texture bites. I'm going to top it with some beautiful bright sharp cheddar. I think you probably could also make this soup with like a white cheddar and it would be very good. I like that yellow color on there. And then top it with a little bit of your green onion. Look how pretty that is. <gasps> yes! This is a hearty potato soup and it is so flavorful. And again, if you like your potato soup with a lot of pepper or salt, add that on too. The texture of the soup is absolutely perfect. The texture of the potato, it's not runny, but it's thick enough. And it's creamy, but not too much. This is a perfect potato soup in my opinion. It's so good. This is a family favorite for our, for our family. Let me know if you have a chance to make it. Mm. Also, down in the show notes, full print printable recipe card for this. You'll see a link to that, plus all the equipment I'm using. If you have any questions, check out the show notes below. Check out my website where there's a full post on this recipe as well as my others. That's lastminutecook.com. And thank you so much for watching and joining today. We will see you next time. Bon appetito.